Client architecture basically serves as the foundation for a modular system that follows strictly to the separation of concerns design principle. It emphasizes on dividing the software into distinct layers, simplifying the development and maintenance of the system. And by ensuring proper separation between layers, each component can be reused, developed and updated independently, promoting flexibility and scalability. So the distinct layers in Flutter Clean Architecture are the presentation layer, the domain layer and the data layer. So in today's tutorial, we'll be explaining each of the layers and what they are responsible for. So if you are interested and happy to see this, consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up and also share the video as well. So starting with the presentation layer, it's responsible for handling the user interface, that the UI aspect and also the user interactions. And it includes all the code related to the visual representation of your app, such as the screens, the widgets, the UI components and also the state management as well. It's important to keep this layer free from any other business logic and functionalities. Its role is to interact with the domain layer and present the data to the user in a visually appealing and intuitive manner. Let's move on to the domain layer. The domain layer is the heart of your application in Flutter Clean Architecture and it contains the core business logic, functionalities and rules that govern your application. It represents the fundamental concepts and behaviors of your app and it is purely written in that and it shouldn't contain or depend on any other UI or database related constraints. The domain layer consists of the entities, the repositories and also the use cases, right? So the domain layer basically encapsulates the essential business rules and entities that drive your application. It defines the use cases or interactions your app can perform such as fetching data, performing calculations or applying business rules. So the repository in the domain layer is basically defined as an abstract class, right? So it's, the con it's where you specify your contract, more or less like the functionality, the functions you'll be implementing within your app, right? So let's move on to the data layer. The data layer deals with the data persistence, network communication, and external data sources. Its responsibility is for handling the storage and retrieval of data from databases, consuming APIs, or other external systems. The data layer typically includes the repository and the data sources. So within the data layer, we have two softwares, the repository and the data sources. Repository in here acts as a bridge between the data layer and the data sources, right? So basically the repository in the domain layer is defined as an abstract class with a contract or the functionality or the methods, right? And the repository in the data layer is where the implementation of that abstract class is. Yeah. So in here, the data sources handle the actual retrieval and the storage of data, such as local databases or remote API calls, right? So that's basically it. So here's the explanation of the code, right? In manly folder, I have a shared folder and also a source folder. Within the source folder, I have a to-do folder that's the feature, right? So I'll be using to-do as a project. So within the to-do folder, it's divided into three layers, the data layer, the domain layer, and the presentation layer, right? So let's start from the domain layer. So the domain layer is subdivided into what? Three folders. You have the entities, the repositories, and the use cases. Right? So within the entities of this to do, I created a file known as the to do dot dot. Right? And it basically holds the entity class, right? Representing a to do item. So it's where you'll be creating your to do models, right? So in here, I create a class of to do which takes in the ID test. And the description right and it has the to map from map and also to json and from the json method on it right so that's where you create your models or your class for representing the to do item so the repository within the domain layer is where you define your contract so in here you define it as an abstract class its implementation will be found within the data layer right so in here you just define it as an abstract class so in here i define it abstract class to do repository right so what are the contracts in here you should be able to add a to do edit a to do delete a to do and also get the list of to do's right so the return type is basically a feature right so this either is coming from the that package Right, it basically return um the right and the left right, showing whether it's a filler or we get the actual to do item right. So the feature, which is going to be either filler 
or re representing the to do right so in here in added in to do we're taking the to do and create an instance of that right so this is basically the contracts you will sign you'll be defining within the repository right so you define it as an abstract class over here so its implementation is found within the data layer right so the data layer contains two folders the database and the repository right the repository in the database is where the implementation of the abstract, abstract to do repository which is found within the domain layer so in here you can see i just create a to do repository implementation which implements the to do repository over here right and this remote database instance is coming from the database right i'll get back to it later so in here you can see we are overriding four methods right in adding the to do deleting the to do editing the to do and also getting all the to do's right so this remote database instance is coming from the database within the data layer right we are hiding the implementation of what we are just doing so we just call our instance which is the remote database and add it to do passing in our to do that's it so when you enter within the database within the data right and also it's called the to do remote database right so in here it's basically defined as an abstract class similar to what you've done within the domain repository right so in here it doesn't return the either package right the um, exception will be handled within the implementation so no need over here so you just dis define an abstract class over here which is going to be named as the to do remote database and it has um four methods right adding the to do with this in the to do and it's of type the to do right you can also edit the to do so right below it is where its implementation is found so we just create a class of to do remote database implementation and it's basically implements the to do remote database which is just up there so in here we will write four methods right so in the process of adding to do you just use firebase as our database right in the process of adding to do you just call upon our firebase fire store dot instant the collection of to do's right dot doc since it is in the to do to do id you pass in the to do id and set it to do and which can just set it to map and return the to do later here so we do the same in deleting the to do move into our collection of to do's target the id and delete it the same as updating or editing the to do move into the collection of to do pass in our id and the update method over here and return the to do right and also getting the list of to do's so this is the implementation in storing updating and deleting it in the firebase so within the repository in the data that's where its implementation is right so we just create an instance of that we hide the details or the functionality within the database so we just create an instance of that and call the methods appropriately so basically um within the to do repository implementation right we use a try catch method over here and since we are using the either package returning two values the failure and the actual or the actual to do right so the failure is basically um an error which is found within the shared folder right you can see within the error folder we have the failure so it's basically a class over here that is in the message right and that's within the constructor as well so back to the implementation so we use the try catch method right so in here we just create a variable of results take a remote database and call the method how to do and pass in how to do right so the either package which is from the that package return the right and the left the right is when we have a successful creation or implementation of a particular thing right so if you have a success successful creation of the to do we return right and pass in our results else within the catch block that's where we handle our error or exceptions right we return the left passing our filler class with a custom error message right so we did same thing as in deleting the to do create the results over here call upon a remote database and perform these methods on it passing the to do as well right so that's basically it
so let's move on to the use cases right so within the shared folder right there's some kind of error you shared alongside right so that should be found within the shared folder and if, if you want to involve the network and other cells within your app it should be found within the shared folder as well right so in here you have an abstract class of network so basically its contract is to check whether it has an internet or not right and the return type is basically a boolean so the network info, info implementation implements the network info right so we override only one method checking whether it has the internet right so in here create a variable of results and check and look up to the google.com if it's able to get the information you just return true otherwise you throw a device exception over here right and passing the custom message of no internet access connects to your device right so implementation of this network can be done within the repository implementation over here right so in here you can just create an instance of the network and just within the try block you just check for the internet connection before adding the to do right so that's basically it um you have a use case over here right so this use case is basically an abstract class right name as the use case and it takes in the type and also the params so we just it has only one call um, method over here that's the core and we, we just pass in the params over here right if you are calling a particular method or function which doesn't require the parameter we just use this no param class over here right you have if you are calling um a use case with a parameter we just use the class of params in here so we may have a method that testing the parameter or doesn't test in the parameter so the, basically that's what we are trying to do here we define our, an abstract class use case that basically testing the type and the params so let's see how it's being implemented and it's found within the domain layer right so the domain layer consists of the entities the repositories and the use cases right so what are the use cases of a to do we add it to do delete it to do edit it to do and also list the to do's right so in adding the to do we create a class of add to do and that basically implements a use case over here right so this use case is what we just i just showed you over there and it takes in the type which is the type is going to be of to do the to do entity right and testing the params of to do right so in here we just bring in our to do repository right so just create an instance of our to do repository which is the repository so this further encapsulates or hide the details in what's adding the to do right so we override the core method within that use case and we just return repository dot add so that's basically what we did for in deleting the to do right we just bring in the instance of the to-do repository and call the method so the use case basically encapsulate the feather details within the to-do repository right so that's it let me go back again so within the live folder i have a to-do feature that consists of three folders the data domain and presentation and the domain is further divided into three subfolders as well the entities the repository and the use cases right the entities is more or less where you'll be defining your models or your to-do item right it may be something else right and the repository within the domain layer is basically where you define your contract what you'll be doing in case you'll be adding it to do editing it to do you'll be doing something else the methods that you do so this is basically what it should look like right call the method if it involves any parameter just passing that parameter so this should be created as, as an abstract class right so its implementation is basically found within the domain layer um within the data layer sorry the data layer further consists of two subfolders the database and the repository the repository in the database right basically implements the to-do repository that's it so we just override the methods within the repository in the domain layer we just created right and perform all those auth functionalities so let's move on to the last layer that's the presentation layer that's what we are familiar with right so we 
within the presentation layer, we have the screens, the widgets, and also the block. That's where your state management will be handled, right? So the screens, you can have a home screen, con um, each of the pages of your screen will be found in the screens, right? And your widgets over here, right? And the block. All right, so I basically will get it for my dependency injection, right? So you let me show you how I go about that. So within the to do folder, right? I created a to do injection within the to do folder. And here you get it, right? So I just bring my get it instance, right? So in here, I just register my database, register also my to do repository and also the use cases and the block as well, right? So in here, using get it as your dependency ingestion, that's how you're going to register all your database use cases, repositories, and also the block, right? So yeah, let me show you the block in here, right? How I go about that. And that's a folder found within the presentation folder. You can see we have block screens and widgets. So within the block, I just create, um, to do block dot that right and that's basically a class over here and create an instance of adding the to do editing deleting and listing the to do's as well right so in here just bring in the which is of type future right either the filler or the to do and in adding the to do we're taking the to do right so i just create a response variable over here in adding the to do it takes in the params and we just pass in that to do and return the response right so the same case in, as in editing the to-do and also deleting the to-do as well, right? And also getting the list of to-dos. Dependency ingestion over here, I just register the block over here, right? Adding the to-do, deleting, editing, and listing as well. So where, where do we initialize this to-do, right? So I just created an injection container right and that should be in level with the main of that right so within the injection container you can see i just bring in my get it instance register my network over here and just initialize the to do right so within your main of that file just bring in your injection right and initialize it before you run the app so within the screen folder, I only have one page. That's the home page, right? So I just bring in my block over here. This, this is how we just call it, right? So this block variable have all the methods in adding, deleting, getting the list of to dos, right? So this instance, you can see deleting the to do. I just call my block dot delete and just pass it to do. And this look much um, simple and easy to go about and the same way in adding the to do right so we're testing the id over here the description and also the test so block dot add passing our id the description and the test right so you can see um the return type of the new to do variable is either of filler or getting the actual to do so it has the fold method on it right so take that variable and fold it right so it returns basically the filler and also the to do so in case of filler i just return the filler in case of to do getting the actual to do you can just return the to do so there are many ways of handling this um stuff right you can do it within your block right right within your block so I prefer this way, that way around, it works. So that's basically it. If you find this to be useful and interesting, consider subscribing, like, share as well. See you in our next tutorial. Until then, stay tuned.